What's up, Bulldogs? All right. This is about like the fourth time that I'm trying to record this video talking about Stefan Molyneux being banned from YouTube. And to a lot of other people that you might not have heard of in you know, th this pattern that we're seeing here. Uh, I'm also going to address the question that a lot of you probably have on your minds, which is when are you going to get banned from YouTube, John? And you know, and what are you going to do about that? And are you worried about that? If you guys are just joining me for the first time, I'm John from bulldogmindset.com. On this channel, I teach you how to be a man. I teach you how to build financial independence, how to get the physique you want, how to get the girls you want, and how to go from the victim mindset to the bulldog mindset. If that sounds like something that you are interested in, make sure you click the subscribe button, click the bell so you get notifications when new videos come out, and take the bulldog quiz to see if you are a bulldog. There'll be a link up here in the cards, also in the description. Okay, so I'll start off by saying this, all right? I don't care whether you like Stefan or not, all right? When Alex Jones got banned, it didn't matter either, okay? When someone gets deplatformed from something like YouTube, it always is going to concern me, okay? Now, we get into the whole censorship and, you know, censorship to prevent the government from suppressing your speech and, and all that, and YouTube is a private company, Google, ABC company, whatever. The legality of it is not important. It's the direction, that's important. That's the thing that I want to focus on is a, is a direction and the direction that we're going and the dangers of going this direction, okay, that have been pointed out to us before, okay? So there's two books I want you to read. One of them is Fahrenheit 451. I'll put a link up here in the cards in the description below, okay? That book, I'm sure you've heard of. Most of you haven't read. Read the book, all right? You don't know what it says just because you think you know what it's about actually read the book. All right. The second one is On Liberty by John Stuart Mills. Okay. It's probably not as popular. Everyone should have read that in school because it's a really important book, philosophical book that talks primarily about free speech, but not just about free speech, but the idea that speech that you dislike should be protected all the more so. And that's some of the most important speech that we have. And that's what I want to talk about here. Again, now I don't, know a huge amount about him, right? I subscribe to his channel. I watch a lot of his videos and he seemed like a reasonable guy to me. I never heard anything that I would have even have classified even remotely as hate speech. Although you look at his Wikipedia article and it says a lot of things about him, but yeah. So, you know, I, I don't even think he was really that radical. You know, there's plenty of people that I've seen on YouTube, myself included. I feel like I'm probably more radical than he is in some of the things that, that I say. It was a shock to me that he would get banned. That was, let, let me put it that way. That was pretty much a shock. Now, I, I guess what happened, just to give you some context here, was that there was some co sort of co coordinated effort. Uh, Reddit, like, banned 2,000 subreddits or something like that at the same time. And then YouTube knocked off, like, 2,000 creators or, or something like that. And Stefan was was one of them. All right. So, you know, this, this happens from time to time. And there are some legitimate reasons to remove, you know, completely, you know, junky content from your your system I, I suppose although you know i'm i'm against even removing content that would be classified as hate speech okay now the reason why i don't like the idea of hate speech well there's two two reasons primarily okay the first one is this is that i believe that hate speech is actually important now before you crucify me, okay, let me give you a little bit of an understanding of why I have this position. The biggest one is this, is that we need to know what people think, <laughs> what they really think. We don't want subversive groups coming about and building echo chambers for their ideas. It's important to have a public dialogue of ideas and for people in general to feel free to express ideas without repercussion, All right? Now, this is one of the big things that social justice warriors have basically attacked me about and have said, you know, they've basically said something along the lines of, you're not being censored. You can say what you want, but your actions your, or your words have consequences, okay? Now, I find that to be an issue. That's a problem when your words have consequences uh, because what it really is equating to is your ideas have consequences, okay? That's the thought police, all right? Now, there's some differences, obviously, right? If you say something, if you're just attacking someone verbally, if you're bullying someone online, okay, if you're saying inflammatory 
quote raises things without any kind of point or reason for for saying it or any kind of dialogue or or you know logic behind what you're saying rationale then of course there's consequences for those things right if you just harass someone online there's consequences okay and i i agree with that because those are actually the words right Th those don't really represent the thoughts so much okay but when you express express an ideology that is counter to what a lot of people agree with or is what some people would classify as hate speech okay there shouldn't be consequences to that again i'm not talking from a legal perspective i'm talking from a what's good for all of us perspective and the reason why like i said is is one of the main reasons is because you want to know what your enemies are thinking and saying and it gives you the ability to counter it and to strengthen your own arguments against it to understand why you're fighting on the right side okay if you are and and sometimes you know this is the other thing that's really hard for people to understand is that historically we've thought that we're on the right side but we're not on the right side or it's flipped okay uh, you look at you know history and you look at things like the crusades okay you think that you know the the knights that were fighting in the the crusades that were slaughtering so many people and doing a lot of horrible things do you think that they thought they were morally wrong in doing those things no they they thought they were right for the most part okay uh, you know, if you look at uh, Nazi Germany and, and whatnot, you know, there was obviously some people who knew that they were doing wrong things. But uh, there were also a lot of people that probably thought they were doing the right thing, that they were doing the morally correct thing, OK, because of an ideology that they believed. Right. Uh, you could look at the other side, you know, against the Crusades and you could look at Islam and and uh, certain sects, not not all of Islam, but, you know, just like not all of Christianity. But you can look at some of the violence that has been committed uh, in the name of Allah, you know, and in the name of the prophet and, and, and things like that. And, you know, and you can look at it in pretty much any religion and, and you see the same kind of, of pattern of people who believe that they're morally correct. OK, and, and, and a lot of times a majority right? A, a significant majority, but it turns out that they're not. <laughs> or or rather, you know, again, it, it's not necessarily that they're not correct. It's that we don't know when it could change over time. Okay, let's look at the Crusades, for example, all right? And, you know, if you were alive during that time and you were in, you know, in, in their ideological group, okay, then you would probably say that, well, People who blaspheme against Christianity and the Pope and the Crusades, well, they should just be killed and we shouldn't hear them, <laughs> right? They can't have anything good to say. They're just blasphemers and they're infidels, okay? So well, let's not hear them. Let's just silence them. And it's not a good thing, right? It would have been better for those voices to be heard and for some opposition to come against uh, what is clearly the right thing, right? You see the same thing happening where you know, we, we say, okay, well, if this person is, is speaking hate speech, okay, then they must be clearly wrong, okay, and so we should just silence them, <laughs> and, and so we do, and that's a problem, because we don't know. Now, again, just as sure as you are that hate speech, as, you know, as loosely as it's defined, that's the other issue I have with it, okay, is wrong, I can guarantee you the crusaders. I can guarantee you that uh, the jihadists. I can guarantee you that so many different ideological groups believe that they were absolutely morally correct. Okay. Just like you believe that you're morally correct about the things that, that you think are, are correct and, and right in life. Okay. And so we need to hear the opposing viewpoint uh, for a couple of reasons. Like I said, one is because we could be wrong as sure as as we are again, I, I keep on reemphasizing that point because no matter how much I say that, <laughs> like people don't equate that. They don't understand that what they actually believe right now, it could be wrong. Just like th they were just, you're just as sure as the crusaders or the jihadists were or are. Okay. Th this is the problem. All right. So, so that, that's one of the issues. And then the second one is that, basically like when you have someone who disagrees with you it forces you to understand why your position is correct right so for example like let's take something like racism okay why is it important that we allow kkk people to to speak okay because they need to present their best argument okay for why racism is good okay let let, let them present their best argument and 
as you hear their arguments, okay, you will start off by saying, well, no, no, racism is bad. It's just bad. Okay, so many people just believe that. But why do you believe racism is bad? Do you even know? Right? I mean, you think you know, but if you're not challenged, you won't examine the idea. Okay? And it's important to not just follow people. It's important to think for yourself. It's important to understand why you believe what you believe. Okay? It's, it really is important. And so when you have people that are challenging and attacking even your basic assumptions, okay? Uh, you know, that's happened with the whole flat earth, round earth thing, right? A lot of people say, well, the earth is obviously round. Okay? But why? Do you even know? <laughs> Do you even have the science? I, I have it now because I looked it up and I was like, wow, these flat earth guys, they're making some pretty damn good arguments. I bet there's some, there's, I hope there's some counter arguments to this. And there were, of course. Okay. And, and there were counter arguments to the counter arguments actually. So, so, so the point is though, is that, you know, by having these ideas, right. By having someone say, you know, promoting racism, for example. Okay. And, and arguing for it, it helps you to understand why it's not correct because now you have to think beyond just the the moral right or wrong and you have to say okay well from a philosophical perspective like we're going to look at morality we're going to look at why is it wrong to discriminate against someone or to believe someone's of of lesser value just based on the color of their skin or, the, or their racial characteristics or or all these things right and you're going to have to have a, a deep understanding right if you don't have those people and everyone just group thinks and says, yeah, racism is bad, then it may be true, okay? It may be true, like in society today. It might change inside in the future. In 200 years, that might, that might not be the case. People might think that, you know, their their religious views may be completely different. They may think that racism is a good thing, okay? Who knows? I You know, again, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not suggesting that that's a good thing, but but it may change. But what, what I'm saying is that if you don't know why, it's bad, okay, then you're not going to be able to defend it very well, all right? And then at some point, someone is going to come up with a really good argument for the opposite, and there's not going to be any good apologists to <laughs> to give an explanation for why we don't want to do this, right? You know, I could say that that has really happened with socialism today, right, and communism, right? There's still a lot of people who believe that communism is a good idea, Okay, it's been tested historically. Okay, there's so many evidences for the atrocities that that political system brings about. Okay, if you don't understand those things, okay, then you're not going to be able to argue very well for why communism is is wrong. Right, right. We we don't want to just you know I want to have people that believe in communism and socialism and I want them to challenge me. Okay. It, it, as detestable as I see those ideas, I want that to happen because it strengthens my ideas or it weakens them if they're weak. Okay. They need to be challenged. All ideas need to be challenged no matter how much we think they're absolutely correct. Again, this is really the point of John Stuart Mill's book on liberty. This is why I recommend that you you read that book. So that's that's like the one problem with that I have with with banning people, removing people socially producing consequences for people uh, in, in regards to hate speech. The second one, hate speech is a very undefined term, okay? It, it is it is very broad and it's very subjective, okay? Uh, th there's not really a good definition of what hate speech is, okay? And there's not really a good way to classify things. And so the problem with something that's broad and subjective is that it's up to the interpreter and it can be interpreted in multiple ways, right? I've seen this happen in the tech community. What happened with a lot of the tech community in conferences, and you're seeing this spread out beyond that, is these code of conducts, okay? These are basically guidelines of how you're supposed to behave. And they ban people from tech conferences because they violated the code of conducts, but they didn't tell them why or, you know, or they gave them some broad interpretation. And what it does is it allows people to apply rules arbitrarily, right? To, to, to basically be subjective in their application of rules so they can exclude people that they don't want saying that they're in violation of a thing, okay? When you have a hard and fast rule, that's why I like programming so much is because, you know, programming is pretty clear, okay? Like you, you write, like let's say a unit test, like a, a test, uh, the test either passes or fails, 
right? It's, it's got defined criteria, right? It either produces this result or it does not produce this result. And we can evaluate, you know, something in, in that fashion. So the closer we are to that, the better that, that we have at, at being fair and, and applying uh, guidelines. And so when you take something like hate, hate speech, you know, there's so many definitions of, of what qualifies as hate speech. And, and, and that's a problem. That's, that's a problem in itself, right? Because, you know, what, what, what if that bubble expands and it's been expanding, right? And so what if I say, you know, if, for instance, uh, it, it's expanded to the point of if you're against the idea of, of transgender, or let's say that you're against the idea of, of homosexuality, then that's hate speech. Well, that, that's, <laughs> that, that's a little too broad for my taste because there's, you know, there's a lot of people who are highly religious who follow a religious, you know, a, a religious text that says that it's morally wrong. And, you know, for just quoting the religious text, they could be classified as participating in hate speech. So that doesn't make a lot of sense to me, right? And, and again, what if you expand that bubble further and further, right? So what if you apply that protection to people who like to, uh, like to engage in sexual activities with children? Right. What, what if we start doing that? And there's been some talk of that. Like, you, you see what I'm saying? Like, it's a very slippery slope. And then you can't, you know, it restricts speech. Right. So we want to restrict speech as little as possible. Again, for the reason that I talked about in the first part of this video, which is really, really important, is that we, we need we need the test. <laughs> we need people that are saying unreasonable things so we can figure out why the things that we believe are reasonable are reasonable. And sometimes every once in a while, someone who's saying an unreasonable thing will turn out to be correct and will change the, the society, change the direction of moral thought in society. It's happened more than once. Okay. But we also have had periods of suppression, you know, the dark ages were a time of that. We think about the crusades and the Spanish inquisition and, and, and some of these things that, that came out of there uh, before the enlightenment period, the Renaissance period. Right. And th there was really not much movement, not much advancement in society because no one could say anything. <laughs> All right. No one wants to get burned at the stake or to be, you know, uh, you know, to have all these kind of uh, bad tortures done to them, right, for those consequences. And it's a very dangerous place to be. So with that said, let's get to the question that's been on all of your guys' minds, which is, do I think I'm going to get banned from YouTube? And what will I do? And, you know, when will this likely happen? So I'm not sure on this. I think it's always a possibility that I could get banned from YouTube. Okay. I think that there's plenty of things that I've said in videos that someone could classify as hate speech. Okay. You know, I don't hate anyone. Okay. I love you all. All right. Uh, even, even my opponents, like if you've seen me argue with, with people who are, you know, of different men's communities, I'm not, I'm not going to say that the name uh, in, in this one, but I I've welcomed them. Okay. And I will have a discussion with them and uh, you know, and I've, I've had all kinds of different people on my channel and and have given them a voice on my platform, you know, not not a you know completely, you know, go in and follow this guy type of thing, but but we'll have a dialogue, we'll we'll have a discussion, right? So, I have no problem with 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 really anyone uh, as as a human being, okay? I I, I don't have any kind of like hatred towards uh, towards anyone really, right? There's people I don't like. There's I there's more of ideologies that I dislike. Okay, so regardless, uh, someone could you know say, well, John is a sexist, John is a misogynist, John is whatever these things, and I, those things have been I've been called those things before. Okay, and it doesn't matter what I've even said on YouTube. Someone could go back and say, well, he owns this company on Twitter. He said this thing. You know, here's a screenshot. So here you go, right? And you know, anyone can be be fingered in that way. So it's definitely a possibility, but it's not something that I'm going to live with, with fear every day. Okay. I, I don't, I'm not going to particularly worry about this. Uh, at the same time, I'm going to be somewhat smart, right? I'm not going to say every possible thing that I could say and just challenge the idea of like, I dare you to ban me, right? If someone like Stefan uh, Molyneux can be banned from YouTube and deplatform, if someone like Alex Jones can, certainly I can. I'm not bigger than those guys. I don't provide more revenue to YouTube than those guys, right? You know, probably Steven Crowder will probably get banned at some point. Okay. And he's a much bigger 
you know, person on on YouTube. And so so YouTube is willing to suffer some financial losses in order to purge what they see as undesirable people from their platform. OK, so I don't think I'm above that. Now, uh, there are some things that I think are are keeping me from necessarily being purged which are, are some of the things that that I've I've made videos against uh I guess I will say the name uh MGTOW okay if you look at MGTOW on YouTube you will find that my videos come up at the top I don't think they really want to get rid of that <laughs> I mean I could be wrong but I think that maybe that's something that's saving me uh no I didn't make the videos for that purpose those are my honest thoughts on it see the problem is like I have a lot of enemies, right? Uh, you know, I did video on Jordan Peterson, also uh, someone who probably YouTube does not like. All right, he's considered pretty, pretty alt right, right? So, uh, and and I attacked Jordan Peterson in the video, okay, or some of his ideas, uh, and, and so, some of the more so the way that he was behaving, and I got a lot of crap from that from from a lot of people in my audience, a lot of people unsubscribed from the channel. So I get a lot of attacks and a lot of hatred from people. Just justifiably so, okay, because I throw a lot of stones. Now, why do I throw a lot of stones is because my biggest enemy is the victim mindset, okay? And it doesn't matter if you're a liberal, it doesn't matter if you're on the left, it doesn't matter if you're a conservative, if you support Joe Biden or you support Trump, it doesn't matter if you're a MGTOW, it doesn't matter if you're a feminist, it doesn't matter what you are. If you are supporting the victim mindset, then I am going to be against you because that's what my enemy is. The bulldog mindset, the whole purpose of this channel of the bulldog mindset is to go against the victim mindset. All right. So that's, you know, that's just what I'm going to do. And, and I'm, I'm going to continue that now. I have taken some what precautions, right? So I'm not going to say every possible thing that I could say, like I said, uh, on this, in this video, I'm not going to say that on YouTube. Okay. So I do have some content that I won't publish on YouTube because I just know, right? I just know the video is going to get taken down and, in, in you know, and I can't speak some of those things uh, because it doesn't make sense, right? I have to be a pragmatist. Right? I always talk about like begin as a pragmatist, end as a pragmatist, okay? So what I've done is a lot of that content and a lot of that content is on things like uh, dating, okay? Some of it's on some of the financial uh, strategies, okay? Uh, you know, you could say pick up, right? Um, dealing with women, all right? Uh, those are probably the most dangerous subjects that I talk about. There's probably some fitness stuff in there too, all right? And what I've done is I've put those videos into the Bulldog Mindset uh, membership, okay? So if you want to get access to those videos, you have to be a member, okay? That's behind my paywall. I control that. It's not even hosted on YouTube. I'm using a, a different platform, Kajabi, and I, I've got the videos there, and I can always transfer the membership to somewhere else and put the videos wherever I want to. I can even just host the videos from my own server. So that kind of protects that. So plus you have to pay to get in, so it's not publicly available, okay? Um, if you guys are supporting of what I'm doing, if you want to hear the completely unfiltered, you know, messages that I have about things, especially on dating stuff, because it's, it's pretty dangerous. That's something I'm not going to talk about like in depth uh, on this channel because it, it will get me <laughs> banned. Like that's, that's like for sure. Right. So um, if you want to get access to that stuff, uh, click the link below. I've got a, a $7 trial right now. You can join, you know, a group of men that believe the same way that you do. Okay. That speech should be free that we should learn to be masculine men that we should uh, that masculinity is not a bad thing okay i've been fighting this whole idea of toxic masculinity for a long time and that's you know that's what the community is about but at the same time i, I don't know if i remember if i said this in this recording of the video or not you know i really support within the bulldog mindset differing opinions right so i don't want you to come in there and just be a mindless drone. I want you to come in there and obviously you should be joining the bulldog mindset because you believe in the bulldog mindset. You you reject or you want to reject the victim mindset, even if you're not there fully at this point. Okay. But it's important that you believe the things that I'm telling you are good, like stoicism and, and whatnot, because you actually believe them. And if you don't, that's fine. Okay. But that's the kind of environment I'm creating. I don't want to create an environment where you're bullied into believing these things. If you don't, if it's not for you, then don't join the bulldog mindset. But if it if it is something that if if you want to, you know, achieve the success in life that 
I'm helping men to be able to achieve some of the things that I've achieved in life and to use my methods to do that, then then join us. This is you know, the best way to do that. So anyway, that's sort of my, my, my backup plan. Now, obviously, if YouTube bans me, it would cut off a lot of my audience, right? A lot of you know, my message, but it won't completely eliminate. I've looked at things like BitChute and I'll probably upload my videos to BitChute, but the problem is there's so few viewers on BitChute, right? So there is a risk that I could lose, you know, this Bulldog Mindset audience that YouTube could ban me and that I would have to start over and it would be difficult to start over because where would I, right? Because YouTube is where people watch videos, but it's possible, but I will have the membership right right now. In, in fact, now is a good time to get in to make sure that you don't lose that because you might not hear from me. I might just one day get banned and, and you might not be able to see the videos and the content that, that I'm making within the membership. So now is a good time to join it and to support that uh, so that uh, we have a group of men that is large enough to be able to do something or to, um, to, to be able to help each other out. Right now, there's like 600 and... 50 or 660 members in the Bulldog Mindset membership. So there's a lot of a lot of guys in there that really are, are focused on improving themselves. So anyway, that's um yeah, that that's that's basically it. I think that at some point it's very likely that I would get banned from YouTube. Um, you know, I think that I do have fairly balanced viewpoints, right? Like, you know, I like I said, the, the fact that I'm willing to attack Peterson, that I'm willing to attack MGTOW, I think that kind of saves me like you can't really group me into the alt right when i'm making videos against jordan peterson and, and migtow right in in some of these these ideas i mean maybe you could but I, i'm not i'm libertarian i'm not alt right in in any way so i suppose that you know like i said it could happen for any reason, but I'm not going to live my life in fear of it. And I'm not going to be super careful with what kind of videos I put out. I'm going to put out the truth, but, but I am not going to do stupid things like put out videos that are very explicit on pickup and, and, and dealing with women and things like that, that those aren't going to put in the membership, or I'm not going to be, you know, very specific with, with certain topics. Let, let, let's say that where I can just, you know, still produce the same effect by making a, a general topic. If you want the specifics, you know, that's why I created a place for the specifics. So this is why it's so important. Okay. I'll, I'll leave you with this, this kind of message here, which is this, which is, this is why it's so important that you put aside what you think about a particular person, right? That you don't cheer when something bad happens to your enemy because you don't like what they're saying. Okay. You don't want anyone to be silenced. I don't want black lives matter people to be silenced. Even if I disagree with their philosophy and their ideology, I want them to be able to say what they have to say. Okay. I don't want them to be silenced. I don't want anyone to be silenced, right? It's really important because I saw a lot of people's cheering when certain people get removed or something bad happens. Right. And that's not good. OK, we don't want any kind of we don't want authoritarianism. Right. I even saw, you know, like I said, I, I think I talked about this before as I, I saw people cheering when the National Guard came in and was shooting people with paintball guns and telling them to get in their home. That's not the solution. That's not what I want either. Right. I'm for freedom. We want as much freedom as possible. OK, we don't want to only have freedom for our side and then fuck those other guys on the other side that's not good okay we don't we don't want our enemies to be you know we don't want to have our enemies be suppressed we want to win because our our, our logic makes sense because our dialogue makes sense what we're saying makes sense and that we've heard the argument from the other side okay that's the way that you win because you want to win hearts and minds not just you don't want zombies you don't want sheep all right, guys, that's all I got.